up, everybody? Welcome back to Couple Things. With Sean and Andrew. A podcast all about couples. And the things they go through. Today we have an awesome couple, but more than that, I think we have Andrew's man crush. That's right. I like comedy. I I like laugh. Do you like laughing? I love laughing. You like laughing? You this do. guy's good at making people laugh. It's Trey Kennedy and his wife, Katie. They're fantastic. They have a podcast of their own. It's called Correct Opinions. But we brought them on because they have some exciting news. They're kind of branching into this whole new like family content. They're growing their family as they've documented their engagement, their wedding, and now... Uh, their first baby. That's right. It's a wild ride. I think you'll love these two. You probably are familiar with these two. Uh, Trey has videos all over the internet, and uh, he's always good for a good giggle. So if you don't know him, check him out. But uh, he's also going on tour in 2023 this summer. It's called the Grow Up Tour. You can find tickets online. Uh, we'll link information for that down below and their podcast down below. Congratulations, Trey and Katie. Thanks for joining us. And I hope you enjoy this one with Trey and Katie Kennedy. Trey, Katie, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we were just talking about our first interaction, you and I, Trey, was uh, probably not not one that I'm proud of, not one that you're proud of, Sean. No. But I tend to do this. I have a habit of awkward first impressions. And I certainly hit that bar with you. I saw you Ubering or, or sorry, <laughs> birding around on a scooter in Nashville. And I just honked the horn, just gave you an awkward wave. You had no idea. I can't believe you actually remember this. I'm shocked at that. Yeah. yeah. You made an impression. <laughs> either good or bad. <laughs> Last thing. Yeah. yeah. Right. It was a memorable uh, one. I was, I was out running around with a uh, buddy, John Christ. And it, it was, I think we were shooting a video. This is a few years ago. And I think you were shirtless, like on a bird scooter. <laughs> <laughs> he just went, yo, and just went by, and I was kind of like, who was that guy? I actually, I, he's like, that was so and so. I was like, oh, is that who that was? And that was it, man. So <laughs> here, here we are. Right? Time. The amount, <laughs> yeah, the unfortunate like amount of first impression stories I've heard like that from people about about me, about you. Yes, Chuck Wicks, John oh, Chris, no. <laughs> Trey Kennedy. There's like countless football players. Your yeah. first impressions are memorable thank you so much i yeah. appreciate that but the show is not about <laughs> me and you guys know that so uh i'm curious how you two met trey and katie oh sure we met on instagram we sure let's did. go <laughs> <laughs> so, i saw there's a photo of her shirtless on a bird scooter <laughs> yeah. there are no, no photos of me like that no, on no, there. No, no. <laughs> no i uh yeah i don't know i was um you know i was just came across her it was very by happenstance and random just like kind of a simple like oh she's cute i'll follow her DM. i didn't know who he was i okay she likes that these i like to really. i like to stay i did not follow him i did not know who he was <laughs> wow yeah. this was like five almost five years ago now yeah almost. oh yeah. my goodness but uh yeah, and just kind of like chat, you know, the simple like chat, a little DMs, but then it quickly was like, oh, wait, I think we kind of have a lot in common. <laughs> and uh, she was, I was, she was in Atlanta, I was in Kansas City, and I was in Atlanta, took her out, and we just like, one of those just like hit it off immediately, stayed up until two in the morning talking. Um, and so that pretty quickly turned into like, let's do this long distance thing. And uh, so we long distanced for a good year plus. Yeah. And she moved here. So, wow. Katie, what was it about? Was it like the, you know, the manly beard, just the pure testosterone infused pheromones, or was it like the beanie? What did it for you? Yeah. It was the videos <laughs> where he dresses up like girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It worked for me. Yeah. Like, it worked for me. <laughs> oh, that's great. Where are you guys originally from? I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, I was born and raised in Oklahoma. Mm. You went to Oklahoma OSU, right? I went to Oklahoma State. That's right. That's a big gymnastics oh, school, yes. right? Oh, yes. Huge gymnastics. Mediocre-sized gymnastics. They're, like, decent at gymnastics. No, they're, no, they're not great at gymnastics. We don't need to lie oh, on the show. Oh. What? Did you all talk at length about <laughs> Oklahoma State gymnastics? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wait, uh, they're, like, the – because we've um, – I'm sure you all have watched this, right? The uh, Cheer on Netflix. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, we, we got fired up on that. So I, the whole scene. and so, so, like, yeah, be real with me. Is it, is the show, the show makes it, makes you believe, you know, this school is the destination for, like, I guess, college-level gymnasts. Is yes. that true? 
Like college is the destination? No, Oklahoma State. Or like if you're if you're going to obviously like Olympics would be better than college. We know it. We get it. Wait, hold on. <laughs> I'm I'm having like a total brain fart right now, and that's why I'm so my palms are actually sweating because it's I'm gonna make myself look like a fool here. <laughs> like the uh, the like, show the JUCO. Like if you're a gymnast wanting to go do like collegiate competitive cheer, is choice number one that those JUCOs in Texas or no? Yes. For cheer? It is. For cheer. It really is. Okay. Absolutely. But wow. then for gymnastics, I have to ask this question. You guys are probably going to be like, this is ridiculous. Oklahoma State, for, is that different than Oklahoma? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It is definitely. I'm, I'm an idiot. That's why I'm having a great man. Oklahoma <laughs> gymnastics, <laughs> Oklahoma State cheer. Yeah. Those are different things. Do you guys do? Do you guys do a lot of interviews That's together? Like the most, yeah, I mean, she's like a decorated Olympian, and I was like, "You do cheer, They're right?" It's like thing, the meanest right? thing yeah. that I've ever said. I watched you growing up, so this is like a cool moment. Um, so we'll talk about great first yeah. impressions, Trey. Wait, hold on. I, know, right? I had to like dig <laughs> myself out of this yeah. real quick. So the reason why I ask is because Oklahoma University is like the number one college to go to for gymnastics. You went to Oklahoma is, State. I know. That's why <laughs> I, my palms are sweating because I'm like, oh, my God. I can't remember if it's OSU or if it's OU who has the really good gymnastics OU, yeah. team. So I'm sitting here so saying like, both like. Yeah. I went to OSU. Yeah. We hate OU. So we've both like greatly offended each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is so great. I'm going to say OSU so is not the greatest at gymnastics. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> okay. I'm, oh, can we move good. on? Katie, do you do a lot of, do you do a lot of interviews with Trey together? Um. No, no, not a, a ton, yeah, a few. Just a few. Do you enjoy this scene? <laughs> yeah, it was fun just watching him train wreck that one. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you didn't even try I just was like, this doesn't really make sense, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It didn't make sense on my side either, so like it, we're both train wrecks there. Um, Wait, I was about to oh, say, because no. this is the, one of the greatest, it's t- it used to be one of the greatest stressors. It's like, you know, Sean and I have this show together that – you know, she would like kind of go off on a tangent that's just the wrong way. <laughs> Is there, she's saying the wrong things, and I used to like try to steer back, but now I'm like, you know what, babe, just go, go ahead and let it rip. It's amazing. Yeah, it might be a good. <laughs> Sounds like a really good husband. Maybe he's gonna bring it back here. I don't know. Just watch. He's just watching me drown. Yeah. Like, hell, hell. Like, oh, jump in the water. Uh, okay, where well, I'm gonna go back to you guys. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, so you guys met. On Instagram, were you both still in college? No, no. no. This was... We were both out of college a couple years. Yeah, a few years out of college. And you're both... You're living in Kansas City, Atlanta. You did the long distance thing. How long into the dating did you guys, like, move to the same place? A little over a year um, of dating, I moved here. And that was for each other? Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, they, yeah. And she had to. She had to do a whole. She did a career shift too. She gave up a lot to to come here. So she was modeling in Atlanta. You know, there's only you know not all the big modeling scene in the Midwest. But um, <laughs> I think she was like, we we made a decision. I'd say we. I think we yeah, did. But it was like did, it yeah. made sense. And she was wanting to maybe pivot to more of a using more of like her degree type of job. And so she did come here, but yeah, new place, new friends, new job. Yeah. I was like, let's just do it all at the same time. That sounds great. Right. (laughs) So question there, Katie, I feel like you and I are similar. I did the same exact thing for this fool. Um, I literally like up and left everything. I quit my job, moved to Nashville, didn't know anybody, moved into the same apartment complex, like went all in. And to a certain extent, it's absolutely terrifying because if it doesn't work out, Kind of like you're in it. Yeah. What did those conversations look like? Because the conversations with us, it'd be like one day I'd be so into it. And the next day I'd be like, I'm not moving to Nashville for you. Like I have my own friends and my own life because I was terrified that things would go wrong. And I did it impulsively. What were the conversations like? And did you ever have doubts there? I feel like we talked about it together so much. Yeah. Leading up to it that I'm just like a very logical person. And we had like stated all the facts and just gotten to the point of like this is what logically makes sense so i mean i feel like once i got past that of like this just makes sense for us i don't feel like i you know 
I was just like, oh, this is going to be all fun. And I'm going to move here. It's going to be so fun. And then it wasn't until I actually got here that I was like, wait, this is really hard. I don't know anyone. I have to find a job. Like, you know, and that's when I, I was all of a sudden like, okay, this is not just all fun and games. And <laughs> this is real life. Um, so. Yeah, that was tough. She... The job, anyone job hunting can relate. It was, we just assumed like, oh, she has this, she has a good degree and resume, like easy, but you know, a few months go by, she can't get a job. Um, you know, we want, we want to find her like a good job, right? Not just something. And I remember the day of our engagement party, you got a voicemail, like a job offer. And it was like, I mean, we were this close to being like, dude, what, what did we do? She can't it's like a smaller market here, right? It's not yeah. that easy. And, but cause that was, that was a good day. You had a job in Atlanta. I was modeling full time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I did thankfully, like once I moved here, I went back a couple times um, and worked with clients that I had worked with before. So I, I wasn't just like totally stranded, but it wasn't ideal. Were you guys engaged when you moved? No. Had the whole engagement thing work out? Not work out. Like, how'd you propose? Yeah, we're married now. <laughs> yeah, it worked out. <laughs> it worked out. <laughs> oh. So, um, that was, I was, I think we always felt confident in our relationship, which made it, that took stress off. I don't think, at least to my knowledge, you weren't like, hey, I should bail on this guy. Or um, so we felt good in that, but we, we got, you'd probably lived there for like six months yeah. or so. Um, so like, right, probably we'd be dating a couple of years almost when I proposed. And so that was exciting and started to, then I think you'd gotten the job and kind of making some friends. So that was an exciting time. Was it a large romantic gesture? It yeah. was. He went all out. Really? He did a very good job. Yes. I was surprised, which is good. That I did a good job. No, I was surprised. Oh, in general. In general. Uh, yeah, that's the key. Oh. The whole thing. Are yeah, you, we did. It was great. Are you willing to share the story? Sure, yeah. he. We had gone to Portland with um, a friend group to see an OSU game and just kind of like... Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State game. And Thank you. to go to Willamette Valley and just like have fun. And so behind my back, he had changed my flight or booked me a new one and canceled my old one to stay an extra day so the funny part of that is we woke up and he had like turned my alarm off everything and i woke up just in pure panic everyone's left we're gonna miss our flight we have to leave right now get up get up and he was like um no we're staying and so at that moment i was like okay wow. good <laughs> oh it's like i think you know we're supposed to have some 7 a.m flight and neither of us are morning people so i kind of it was kind of a funny start because she's like waking me up at 5.45 in the morning, like, come on. I was like, we're actually not leaving. <laughs> just like half awake. And she, who's usually like, don't talk to me in the morning, was like, oh, really? <laughs> and, and I was like, all right, yeah, let's go back to sleep for a couple hours. Yeah. I did. I don't know how much you did. Yeah, but, um, he had a full day planned. We went hiking. We, um, Yeah, just kind of hiked all day. Yeah. Proposed at golden hour. Yeah, he had, had a nice he, dinner. Picked out a dress and bought a dress for me to Whoa, wear. Whoa, bro. Come on. No, yeah. come on. Don't don't slow play this, bro. You crushed the game. What? He Thank did. You. He did. He literally you got me. Some, I, might, I might have to like to note or something. Some people were like, where'd you get that dress? <laughs> <laughs> I am very people curious when guys do this. Like, Katie, was it your style? Yeah, I mean... Well, <laughs> I'm always comment. like, I always like the idea of like, oh, Andrew buying me a dress and it's on the box on the bed. But then I'm like, no, do not buy me clothes. I think it, it, it was cute, cute enough and did its job. But yeah, yeah. I don't know if she necessarily would have picked it out for her, her vibe, but That's you wore a it a few. Oh, you wore it recently. Cause, oh, you're, uh, she's pregnant, which we just announced, which is very exciting. Let's go. I don't know if y'all missed that. Yeah. And all, it was just the other day. So I think you pulled it out because it's loose fitting. And you're like, look, I'm wearing it. I'm like, well, you're running out of options. <laughs> yeah. in wardrobe, so. <laughs> Thanks so much. Congrats. I was say, wait, I Thanks. miss this. So huge congratulations. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, we just, yeah. no, you're fine. We literally post about it just like weekend. a couple of days ago. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. So uh, um, I don't know when this is coming out, but she's 
We're doing February. Mm -hmm. So exciting. Wow, because y'all have y'all have two or yeah. three? We have two. Yeah. Two. Yeah. So here's the thing. Trey, your content, I remember you did your video on the engagement and like the walk through the woods with the signs. It's like, but you also just did one on the, the pregnancy announcements, like part one, two, three, four, like whatever the whole, you did the video sequence on that. It's funny because we, sh we like, sh you know, that's kind of our, that's the videos we share is like, Hey, pregnancy announcement. And you know, to a large extent, you're making fun of our style of the stuff, but you, I love, I love your approach where it's like, this is, you're kind of tracking your life moments and making the comedy around that, which is like same subject matter, completely different way to attack it. It's awesome. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks man. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm glad you enjoy it. Cause yeah, we certainly don't want to like tick any people off when it's a fun picking fun. And like, you know, I've made fun of all these gin reveals or doing all this, but you know, she had me out, uh, you know, downtown with some photographer taking pregnancy announcement photos. And I was just like, Oh my God, <laughs> we're yeah. all doing you it. Have to do doing it bro. it. <laughs> we're all doing it. I will good. say you'll look back on those pictures and they're pretty exciting. Oh, yeah. Yes, I, I literally said that. I said, oh, and now I'm getting reprimanded like, by someone else's wife. <laughs> 20 years or whatever, She'd you will be like, I'm going to be so glad I have these. So, wow. And I will say, yeah. too, I was adamant I would never do it because I get very, very embarrassed with photo shoots. I am not a photo shoot person, but I just have to check off the box. Um, I will recommend you should definitely do a maternity shoot because having like one picture in time of like that, that you face. You just did that, right? No, I'm not, when I when I'm actually really showing. You have a lot of photo shoots to come. Trey. A lot, a lot. I am curious though. It's we have a clip somewhere. I don't know where it came from, but you were quoted saying you're the shy guy. You feel like you're the shy guy that likes to post videos, and I feel like that's a really interesting dynamic and something we had to deal with within our relationship. Is it's almost like a split personality to a certain extent. You become this shy person in the outside world, behind like off camera. But then on camera, you're someone else. Do you guys ever find that difficult within your relationship to turn on and turn off as far as like acting in your career goes? Usually, no. There have been like a few times where I kind of, yeah, make it a joke and be like, you're not on the stage anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> I'm just getting ripped a new one. <laughs> no, no, yeah. No, Wait, that, no. that didn't come to my mind. I was like, it, yeah, I grew up innately very shy and reserved. And I've obviously gained confidence in like over time getting on stage and doing this. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely the big personality and she's very patient and kind. And so around close friends, I've been like, Hey, let me know if I'm, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't want to be annoying. I, I make fun of annoying people. I was like, I can't be annoying. So she, there's been a couple of times she's like, you're, you know, yeah. <laughs> this isn't a performance, <laughs> which is helpful. And, uh, but there's other times too, when we around strangers, I can be very reserved. Like we've been going to the doctor obviously for, to her checkups. And I think one of the nurses uh, is a fan of mine, I guess to Katie, she's like, he's very different. In person. <laughs> yes. and, Cause I I'm just sitting lot, there yeah. quietly. I don't know. I don't know if I'm supposed to like dance around the halls of the if in the doctor's office, of like the OBGYN. Yeah. But, uh, uh. It's yeah. For the most part, it's a great balance. She helps me um, kind of smooth out some of my edges and and calm down some nervous energy. And and I like to think I bring her some confidence and assertiveness. Mm -hmm. And just some fun to be around. So. <laughs> That too. You said you're fun to be around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I'm, I'm fun to be around, man. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> also amazing. Yeah. Uh, going one step further, though, within your guys's content that you do post, you guys blur a boundary, or like you blur that line of you. You do share each other. You share your stories in comedic ways. Where are your boundaries within your relationship as it pertains to your career? What are you allowed to? poke fun at and and talk about and like what are those distinctions we luckily i'll say katie is a great sport i mean that's why a big part of why we're together is she has a great sense of humor and loves and can like take all all the punches in the world and i 
you know, I'll go on stage and do a bit where I'm kind of like making fun of us or her. And she's just like, that was great. There's, so that's super helpful that she's all for it and a good sport. Yeah. Um, so but it's good to just laugh at yourself. Yeah. I mean. I mean, there's definitely been a couple instances where she was like, let's not do that again. <laughs> but for the most part, um, I, I try to keep the podcast a little different. It feels like a more intimate space and we talk about stuff, but in the general content that, you know, 90% of people know me for, uh, I try not to get too personal. Like, you know, we, we announced the pregnancy and that's fun, but, uh, it's more just lighthearted, fun stuff that hopefully doesn't offend many people, uh, including my own wife. So I'm curious, what is like from a comedian standpoint, there's gotta be some unique hurdles relationally where it's like either the expectations of the other person or like your natural habits of like always trying to be funny and not being able to like have, you know, not feeling comfortable having the deeper conversations. Are there any that come to mind of like, wow, you know, <laughs> maybe it's a weird question to ask, but like blind spots of like, this is actually tough as a comedian when I'm building relationships. That's um, a great question. Yeah. You have something? Yeah. I don't think like in our relationship specifically, he's good. I mean, he's a very down to earth person. And so I don't think that, that the comedy or like being so goofy like overshadows his seriousness like between our relationship um but i do think maybe in other relationships yeah it, I, it does those are great question what comes to mind is i i just try to be careful because i'm you know for a living and i'm getting rewarded for kind of just like making fun of everyone yeah including myself but um sometimes I, i've got to watch how much that trickles over into just like normal if I, you know, not everyone wants to like have their first conversation with you and just get roasted. <laughs> like some people love that. Like my best friends and I just make fun of each other constantly. And, and even like, uh, you know, Katie and I tease each other. Um, some, you know, the, my buddies, wives, we all just make fun of each other, but to make sure I can't just be like Katie, I, I think there's, I can't think of an instance, but there's been times where maybe she's like, you know, you kind of poked fun at that person and they, that hurt their feelings. I'll just be like, they can't take a joke. I don't want to be around them. And she's like, well, they're still like human beings. I'm like, You're right. I can't, it's easy to default to the comedian's rule of like, everyone should be okay with what I'm saying, which I don't necessarily agree with. So what made you guys want to start the podcast together? We, the, my podcast is like taking on different forms. So I've actually been doing correct opinions podcast for like three, maybe four years. That's crazy. And it started as just like a fun attempt. I was a solo show, just kind of riffing and just kind of like a fun little side thing that I thought would be fun. And then it developed a little more. And I brought on um, the co-host Jake, who's hilarious and helps me with stuff. And then Katie would join intermittently. And now she's kind of we got this new studio and this new setup and Katie has been on kind of um, a full host for a while now. So it's taken on different forms. And I think people have just loved having her on just because obviously she is my wife and we have a good banter, but um, the f obviously we have a lot of female listeners. So I think it's a fun female energy when, uh, if me and Jake start getting off the rail, she can be like, you know, easy boys. I feel like I'm just kind of voicing what the female audience is probably like wants to say to them. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> Which is usually probably a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious talking about baby and pregnancy. As far as it goes between you guys who are now mom and dad, how does, how has that changed your dynamic? I'm, I'm even more wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, it's, it's, we're starting to get into it, right? So she's like halfway through. Almost half, yeah. Wow. Pregnancy. That's and awesome. And so just the other day, she's sitting there like, which, I'm just racking my brain. I don't know which color stroller to get. I'm like, <laughs> I don't even, I don't, what is that for? Like how, <laughs> does it, do we use it at the beginning? Do we, when, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's, we're in that state kind of where she's like the, where should the bassinet Good job. Good job. be next? Should it be the side of the bed or in front of it? I'm like, I, 
We still have a lot of learning know. to do. And <laughs> but I think I mean it's been a really cool experience as everyone knows who has had kids. Just, you know, the bonding of we're gonna be parents together and this is our gonna be our baby and um yeah, that's been cool just to experience together. Uh Trey, do you read a lot of books? Uh yeah, I do. I There's like a point to that question. <laughs> Um, because it doesn't seem like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, it didn't sound it didn't sound great coming out. Um, we actually have had another guy on this show, the uh, dude's guide. What? Dad, dude's guide to dad life dude dad. or whatever. Dude, dude dad. dad, yeah, he wrote a whole book. His book is He's awesome great. for dads when it comes to go when your wife is going through pregnancy. I would recommend. He's a buddy of mine. He's actually sent me that book. So. I've started to hasn't read it clearly. It's <laughs> actually great. It's so good. Uh, oh, it's hilarious. It's a great idea. What well, yeah, it said it'll be like your baby's the size of a beer can. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> great. Um, oh, he's awesome. Anyways, yeah. tangent. So. I know he's they're about to have their fourth or whatever. That's... He actually he texts me congrats and like he's like, Yeah, the, uh, thanks, man. I don't know if we're gonna have four, but we got one on the you way. Don't, you never know. You never know. <laughs> Let's hash that out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What are, what How are you all gonna have? Do you know? Oh, God. I'm the I'm the middle of five kids. Sean is a only child. Do you guys have siblings? I'm one of five. Also, let's go. Where I you fall? You're two. oldest child. I could tell. He's two. Number two, okay. but I'm the only girl. So oh, oh, gotcha. Mature, kind of the oldest, responsible. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Trey? Two. I have one. I just have one little sister. So, I'm ready for like five kids. I, never. Mm-hmm. But Never. We're just gonna have Never. triplets well, and then call yeah, it a day. Settled. I'm good. I'm yeah. potentially good with two. I could maybe be convinced to go one more, but that's where we're at. We only have two right now. I know. I I could be convinced to wow. be done. Anyway, you heard it here first. She's done. <laughs> what are <laughs> are you guys like uh, freaked out? At, like what what are the thoughts right now? You're just like you're in the figured out mode. What are your expect? You know, traveling, people always are like, ah, I think we're going to, that part of our life is going to get overshadowed. What? No, I'm just curious, like, what, where are they at? Just mentally. Yeah. Katie's I like, mean, we currently think that we're just going to keep going. <laughs> 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 I'm buying all the travel things and, you know, obviously we know it's going to change. He's planning on going on tour next year um, a few months after the baby's born and that will obviously look very different than it did last time um but i'm hoping to not let it overshadow too much but just know realistically that's just how it goes sometimes i think <laughs> i think she obviously it's it'll be tougher tougher for obviously the the mom has to really be there a lot more at the beginning I'm, i've learned these things um, I didn't, I didn't even know how they were fed to me. I didn't know that, <laughs> but they, like, yeah, well, I'm going to obviously take a few months off, go back on tour. And I think she's a little more like, yeah, I'm going to, which she's talking the other day. She's like, I'm, I'm going to bring gonna, the baby. I'm going to be there to a lot of them. Like maybe a couple, but let, I feel like you're going to be not there for a lot. I mean, I'll, <laughs> that's why I'm, I'm doing less. Yeah, um, we kind of strategically plan the next we're, one. We're better, obviously but. naive, and we're going to see how, how all of it goes, but still very surreal. Yeah. Um, well. I just have little moments, like watching. I'll just watch football with my buddies for like 15 hours in a day and be like, I probably won't be able to do this that often anymore. <laughs> just little things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no. I will say – he has a different opinion, but I, to- I totally agree that you can continue traveling and you could make the entire tour. It's just, it's just a difference of like how you want baby life to look, but it's yeah. totally manageable. Yeah. You watch 15 well, hours you. of football. Oh my gosh. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Yeah. So football games. Yeah. We can do it. Um, yeah. On your guys' social media and in regards to like how you script your content and, and, publish it to the world. A lot of your private life is very, very private. You keep your guys' relationship pretty under wraps. You keep that kind of on the other side. As far as baby is concerned and going into the next phase of your life, as far as like growing a family, will it stay like that? Will it be stricter? 
Have you guys had those conversations? To be honest, as good as anybody I've seen, you've separated Mm -hmm. your content with your life. So kudos to you. But appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, I kind of made made that decision a while back. I think when we first started dating, it was kind of like this weird. um, Obviously, every normal person you date someone, the big first post is a big deal, and we had talked about that. Obviously, where sure she was a little bit like why am i the secret and i kind of explained i don't know i just so when we got engaged or we got a little bickering because we got engaged i was even kind of like i don't i don't need to do like a whole post but she was kind of like you're gonna post (laughs) i was like yeah that's probably a thing that's sort of the pregnancy deal i'm like do i need to i'll just keep making funny videos it's like well she's be walk around obviously pregnant eventually and yeah i think Stuff like that's fine. But I wanted to, um, I just worry sometimes, and I'd love y'all's opinion on this, of I, I'm very content, and it's more me, right? I just want to make people laugh. I don't want to di- divert into this type of influencerness that isn't me, more of like the lifestyle family stuff that y'all do so well. Um, I just don't think it's for, for me. And so just trying to keep it. And we talked the other day about our future kids, how, you know, I don't plan. I think I'll just keep them off entirely. Um we can talk about them or obviously like I'm sure the content will allude to it and and you know my experience just ex, you know being a new dad and stuff but yeah what it, what are y'all's experiences with being a little bit more in the in the forefront of like our content is relationships and our marriage and our family how do y'all balance all that we tried to go to the comedy route but uh oh my god just didn't have it like you did. So, <laughs> so, going, so then yeah. we just made the pivot. We said, all right, well, um, it is weird. Like, so I know you, you got your MBA, right? Yeah. I didn't think I was going to be freaking making YouTube videos for a living. Sure. I thought I was like doing civil engineering and, you know, got picked up by the chiefs, thought I'd be playing football. And then I thought I'd be doing comedy, but none of those three things worked out. So now, mm. now we've just, done this but i the weird thing is social media is what like 10 years old like nobody's really done this right like exactly (laughs) we talked to drew and ellie holcomb and they they mentioned how just in general like the human heart is not made for fame Mm -hmm. or like you know these millions of opinions like really he's like you're supposed to just have input from a a handful of people not so many um Mm. so we're just trying to figure it out as well as anybody else is. Um, I don't know if we're doing it right, though. I would say navigating family, though, for us, it was always a question. We started out saying we didn't really want to share our kids, and every day it just kind of became a different conversation. Honestly, it becomes so all-encompassing that it's kind of the only thing you talk about. So, Like being a parent. It, yeah. yeah, so it became like a natural thing for us to talk about. And in regards to our family and how we navigate it, we just try to have an open conversation every single day of kind of like the boundaries I was asking you guys about. They move every day based off of how we're feeling. If we can make fun of each other, if we can't, if we're overtired, um, if we're going to show our kid today, but not tomorrow. Like it's just, we have to, we, we give each other the ability to turn it off every single day and say, I don't, I don't feel comfortable today with it. And it's just kind of how you have to operate, which is hard with a business, but it becomes such a priority, your family, that it makes it easy. Yeah, I think y'all are crushing it. I think I yeah. think I, I have it easy sometimes. It's like comedian. It's kind of like, oh, this guy, he's just joking. You know, if someone doesn't like it, I'm just like, you can't take a joke. And I kind of move on. Um, whereas people in y'all's position, it's a little more like, you know, yeah, like you said, opinions. Like you're parenting this way or choosing this or you post it you're Christians and you said this and I have the out of just like, I was joking. Uh, (laughs) It's, that's like, there's a little bit of that. Obviously there's a, to a degree, but yeah, I'm sure it's, it's tough. And so we'll, we'll have to navigate that. Yeah. I was talking with my friends the other day of, we were discussing our college degrees. You said MBA engineering. We were like, so many of our degrees we got 10 years ago now were like the jobs we have now didn't exist when I was enrolling in college. Mm -hmm. so it's the world's moving that fast and it's like i was i'm trying to like hire people i'm like what do i 
what do you pay a part-time editor of clips for TikTok? Oh, you're just making stuff <laughs> up over here. I don't know. <laughs> Um, um, so it's a, it's a weird world, but it's fun, but it's, we're very much, all of us are just kind of winging it as yeah. best we can. Katie, are you still working a job? I'm not. I quit the job that I got here. I'm an engineer too. I did biomedical engineering. Whoa. Um, yeah. That's next level. <laughs> Civil engineering is not entry good. level. I'm not civil. Biomedical Sorry, is advanced. I don't know about that. <laughs> no, a little bit about a lot of engineering. I used to, not anymore. Um, so I was working in medical devices, and when the tour started back this time last year, I quit that job so that I could go on tour with him, um, which I'm very glad I did because it was just a oh, co- so fun. really cool experience to do together in our second year of marriage mm. and live on the tour bus together and you know all that stuff. Um, so since the tour has ended – just kind of helping out Trey with stuff and we are renovating some houses that will hopefully be Airbnbs and Woo. just things like that. Modeling gig here and there. Yeah. Still modeling a little bit. Um, but pregnant models hit us up. Yeah. I mean, I mean, <laughs> if you need one, yeah. it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. We, we toured like a bit while she still had her job and like she would fly out Friday after work to like not even see the Friday show and get there late and then see the Saturday show and fly home Sunday. And we're like, I don't think I was like, I can't do this. She's able to quit. Let's it's, we try to prioritize, you know, that experience as well as the marriage of like, I'm going to hardly see you. This is, and it's going to, you're going to be exhausted. Let's. So we, yeah, we're grateful for that choice. Yeah. You enjoy tour life, Katie. I did. I, I mean, it was, bunch of guys on a bus and me we eventually got a girl merch (laughs) person um but it was really fun and it was way more tiring than I thought you know I wasn't performing I was just sitting backstage every day but I was exhausted just from sleeping on a bus and being in a new city every day um so it was a fun experience actually just this weekend when we were in Huntsville I was like oh I kind of missed the tour life that was fun you could kind of forget about all your other responsibilities. It was, like, it was, yeah, it was kind of like a fantasy world. Of, yeah. You're in this vortex of just like planes and buses and yeah. venues. It's from- but yeah, we would talk about all of us performing. You kind of get that, like you guys have both performed in various stages. You get that um, rush and she wasn't receiving that kind of boost of, so I would argue it was like more tiring for her to just be there and support behind the scenes where I'd get off stage and be like, hey, let's go out on the town, man. I'm up, let's stay up till... T-. And she'd be like, let's... <laughs> done. So, but we had a blast, and the crew all got along great. It was We had great people. It was fun. I was going to ask, Katie, I don't mean this in an insensitive way. I just know, like, with us, we've had to play those roles back and forth. Playing the supporting role sometimes can be very exhausting, and it can sometimes mess with identity especially trade too with you going on tour and being off tour and then potentially taking a break as far as your guys kind of like behind the scenes life goes do you ever find that you struggle with like maintaining your identity when all the cameras are turned off I definitely after quitting my full-time job and being on tour it took like probably a few months in the tour after kind of the like wow factor wore off And I was kind of all of a sudden like, wait, what, like, you know, there is a little bit of that identity of, I don't have this like quote unquote job title anymore, um, that I can kind of be like, this is what I do or, you know, and so it was definitely a lesson I'm sure a lot of people go through in like various ways. I think a lot of women go through it when they decide to stay home or, you know, there's, it happens in a bunch of stages, but it was a good, um, it was a good way for me to kind of like recheck, like what is my identity in? Um, and you know, what are, you know, what am I doing this for and stuff? So it, but it was harder than I thought, honestly. Yeah. I mean, she's, she's done a great job. I get it's hard and she's, yeah, it's a very, she's been unbelievably supportive because I've had my own issues of, I mean, just this past week I did shows, uh, in Alabama, like three nights. It was like night one, felt great wow i'm just killing it and then like the night two 
I tried some new stuff and the crowd wasn't as fun. And then I come off stage and I'm just to her, I'm like, am I, am I even that funny? And so you, you go with these crazy swings doing what we do of like this content performs well, or this joke does well, or this one doesn't. And, um, she's hugely supportive when I just have to be honest and be like, these last handful of videos didn't do what I thought. And so you have to get a job again. <laughs> like, I don't think that's going to happen. But I think that way, uh, I'm sure we all do. Oh, and dude. Yeah. So we support each other in that way. I was going to say, and I have to add, Trey, like, was so good at just, like, making <laughs> it feel like a team effort. That, like, everything we do, you know, for his tour, just it's all, like, for us as a family and a team effort. And he does a good job with that. Do you, are, are you, like, you mentioned your Christians. Is that, uh, has that, I was just, we were at this YouTube conference this past week with like, you know, I don't know how the heck we ended up there, but it was supposedly a hundred of the top YouTubers. And there was all these people that said, ah, oh, yeah, we used to like be Christians and then, you know, moved out to LA and now we're not anymore. Has that been jaded? Has, you know, you've now been exposed to so many people. What has that trajectory been like the evolution of that? Especially like, as a comedian too. It's kind of a tough spot, you know, uh, to be right. that brand, you know? Yeah, I think it's, I think a, a lot of people know I'm a Christian and, um, yeah, I think a lot of them, like, like all of us, you know, like growing up, I would idolize people even more if they're Christian. Cause you're like, well, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're on the same team. I'll get you fired up. And yeah, yeah. As a comedian, cause you know, like I said, your whole, it's just poking fun at things and some people take jokes better than others. And, uh, I, I, I felt pretty, I feel very confident now and kind of, I guess where the line is or where, where that blurred line is of, um, hopefully I think people understand I'm trying to be funny. Sometimes I might rub your wrong, wrong way or, um, but I, I think I'm fortunate that I've over 10 years of doing this found, kind of the right formula for like making fun of things where people feel loved by the being made fun of and not like um, angry by it. But it can be tricky, and especially um, being someone who's known, the whole brand is like take nothing seriously, goof off. And then Christianity is obviously a very deeply personal and um, intimate thing to like throw that out there every now and then just feels like a crazy change in content, right? So just trying to trying to do what I feel like I'm called to do the best I can. Um, it can't be tricky, but it, it is a shame. I, you, you mentioned all these people who used to be Christians. And they aren't now. It feels like that's happening more and more, but I feel very stronger and stronger in my faith and very grateful. You know, I grew up in a, like a bubble in the Bible belt of Oklahoma. And now I've, I've been to, you know, all across the country, met all sorts of people and, um, I think it's just helped me get gain new perspectives and appreciate more opinions. And I don't know. It's a good question, though. Mm -hmm. Kind of rambling. How how does the that approach of take nothing seriously goof off? Does does that like? <laughs> how do you guys do conflict? Is it like that where you're like, ah, freaking no big deal? That's kind of honestly how we are. Where I'm like, yo, not a big deal, and then she's like, it's a big deal, and I'm. Don't compare yourself to a comedian. I am. You're man. not a I'm comedian. <laughs> <laughs> You're not. Uh. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you, yeah, you and me, man. So <laughs> <Dude. good." laughs> no, <I did. laughs> don't give him that. <laughs> oh, I like that. Uh, um, go ahead. Yeah, I mean that definitely happens maybe sometimes. Um, but I mean, I feel like that's also maybe just like having a male female like let's not worry about it, you know? And the girl's like, no, we need to talk about this. <laughs> now you're getting in trouble by my wife. <laughs> yeah. What are we doing? No, I mean, there's definitely some, uh, one of my favorite things to do is try to make her laugh when she's clearly angry. <laughs> Which is and then so she's like, to go she's like, well. Yeah. Yeah, she's like laughing, but still furious. I'm like, I know I'm laughing, but I'm even madder now. <laughs> uh, um, but no, I like to, we've, I think we're very pleased with our marriage thus far and obviously have worked on it and working on it. But, uh, Katie does a great job of 
very communicating very patiently where I, like you said, want to maybe do the, it's not that big a deal. We're good. I just honestly don't want to, you can't say there's been several times where I'm like, let's just sleep this one off. And she's just like, wake up. <laughs> we're not going to bed. <laughs> and I'm like, ah. Oh. Katie, that's me too. I'm like, don't you dare close your eyes. Uh uh-uh. uh. I'm like, we are not going to bed angry. We are going to talk this out. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bad idea. I feel like it doesn't work for us. It doesn't anyway, work for you. Anyway. Um, last question that I want to talk about your tour and wrap this up. But I am curious from, you, from both of you guys, individual perspectives, just having experience to this lifestyle on separate sides. Um, what's the biggest lesson you've learned about mass recognition, whether it be like a pro or con to your relationship? Oh. And I, Good to question. like add a little bit to that, the reason I ask is, mm-hmm. Try hearing you talk about how sometimes you have a good night or a bad night when it comes to being on stage. I feel like it can be really hard, and we struggle with that too. We live to indulge the rest of the world, and our days can be drastically affected based off of how many likes or how many views or how many laughs. How does that recognition play a factor into your guys' dynamic? I I feel very lucky. Um, you know, everyone's always surprised that I don't live in LA, right? Or Nashville or these, and no real reason. I think COVID obviously like cemented the fact that you can kind of be everywhere. And um, I just are, we have really, both of us come from great families and we have such a, I have a great group of friends and each other that um, as much as those kind of feelings float in of, you know, uh, I just, I don't have it anymore finally. Uh, you know, the imposter syndrome we always hear of, I've finally gotten figured out. I'm not actually funny here. It all comes crashing down, you know, bits of those thoughts. And I just think I have great support in that. Like, yeah. And Katie will always say to me, like, Hey, maybe you're, maybe you, people don't think you're funny and that's okay. Which initially I'm like, well, that did really help. But, <laughs> uh, but I love that she says that because it's just getting at us. Like, that's, it's not really the whole mission here. I mean, it, it is right now and it's clearly a place God's put like led me to and I'm going to do it as long as I can but if next week everything disappears for whatever reason you know I have people that actually know me um, love me and support me and vice versa and I I try to remember that too I think people in our position get in this uh, headspace of like we owe our fans things or like they just have been so good to us and they, the, at the end of the day is they don't know us personally and we don't know them personally. And like, we can provide a product that's beneficial. Um, but it is people aren't following me cause they just feel like they want to help out this guy. They, they like think I'm funny. And so if I'm not funny, they're done following me. So to remember there is still kind of this product customer relationship has helped me. Uh, I'm so obviously grateful for them and enjoy connecting with them personally a little bit in person and stuff. But, um, those are all my big mindset shifts that have helped me not lose my mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you do a, I mean, I'm a worse, yeah, that was, I'm, that's my worst case scenario. I like to play worst case scenario of like, all this is gone tomorrow. So, so what? <laughs> Thank we, God for the know? engineering degree. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it all goes, yeah, if it all goes to crap, I'll just kind of retire and she has to work. So. <laughs> yeah. It's not the worst. <laughs> uh. Um, but I mean, I Trey handles, you know, because when we started dating and, you know, it's kind of progressed as our relationship has and not being married, um, he's done a good job of just kind of like leading the way of just like, you know, he interacts with people who come up to him, you know, very well and is very kind and um, things like that. So he's done a good job with that. For some reason, when I, when, we were talking about this interview. I thought I thought it was gonna be like you're gonna come on, be super high energy, but this has been pretty chill. This has been a chill conversation. I like it. <laughs> and I gotta get oh, a man. beanie like that. When when no, two comedians oh get in the same room, man, <laughs> dude, like, we just kind of just vibe. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm gonna hear this for the rest of the day. He's gonna think he's so funny. Uh, <laughs> Did you hear what he just said? He goes, "I gotta get a beanie like that." He's gonna walk around yeah. like he's here. <laughs> Oh my beanie, God. beanie weather. <laughs> Jeez, That's it's funny. definitely too early for that though. I don't, it's like it's like eighty degrees out. 
down here? Oh, not in Kansas City. We're up north a little bit. I woke up to a crisp 55. Wow. Mm -hmm. Good old Midwest. Mm -hmm. I do miss the Midwest. All right. So real quick, tell us about your Help Me Help You tour. Thanks. Yeah. Um, All the good stuff. Help Me Help You tour. We're... Uh, all this info's on my website, treykeeney.com, working on new material. So it's super fun, kind of intimate, like, uh, I, you know, I'm actively trying new jokes. Um, they've been funny, some not funny. That's the beauty of it, you know, <laughs> just go out there and, uh, it is really fun. And we've done a few of those stops so far. It's been great gearing up, trying to get the, the hour all put together to tour big time after the kid's born. So, uh. We did that, and so yeah, between that, our podcast, and the my special from the first tour, we've we've been actively working on going back and forth, and we finally decided on uh, we'll be releasing that. I'm not sure when this will come out, but it's going to be out um, October 18th. My first ever special. That's awesome. On what? Where? Yeah. It'll be on. Uh, it'll be like on Moment House. So it's like a we. Yeah, yeah. None of the streamers wanted in. Mm-hmm. On the it, Christian influencer guy, huge miss, so we'll bro. It to you, honestly, huge freaking miss on their part. <laughs> <laughs> we're uh, so we're just putting it to the people. It's gonna be yeah, like just pay to play type of thing. Uh, we'll probably put it out on YouTube for everyone to see eventually. But um, really excited to. That's awesome. Didn't to just do it with the people. Yeah, it's been a cool like gone to this point the whole time just with me and the people following me. So we're gonna keep it that way. What is it? Didn't uh, like Andrew Callahan release a special? Like the, people Andrew, crush Andrew Schultz. Schultz, thank you, thank you. I don't know Correct. who. Correct. So it's that is. it's that thing. Yeah, similar. He kind of uh, his was different. You know, he's really like a edgy, and so I guess some streamers, he's comedian where they wanted to, him to remove a couple jokes that might yeah, yeah. upset people, and he was kind of like, I'm just gonna put this out myself so I can own it and do what I want with it, and that's kind of what we're doing too. So that's awesome. Congratulations. Do you ha- do Thank you feel you. the need to preface the tour with like trying out new jokes? Is that a thing like a tri- like a prep tour before the big tour or like? That is actually yeah. That's so you'll notice most comedians will they'll kind of brand it as working out material. So it's uh, lowers just expectations. A fun vibe because I mean it's still I like to think people were laughing. Yeah, Katie it was, was it was a good show. It's not like this, <laughs> but um, and it's to help the audience to. You know, if, if you've been, maybe you drove a few hours to Nashville and now I'm coming to your town in Alabama, just so you know, it is new stuff mm-hmm. than what you saw, you know. So we hoping to brand it that way so people, sometimes people get confused. And I feel like someone will come to this, you know, we do the Are You For Real tour that the special's coming out and someone will be like, I just went to this show two weeks ago. I'm like, and I'm, and I'll say to them like, you, okay, you did realize it'd be kind of the same, right? Like, oh yeah, I just want to see it again. I'm like, okay, good. <laughs> every now and then, someone's like, you told all the same jokes. Like, yeah, I'm not writing a new one, new show every day. But wow, it's amazing. You do put out a lot of content. If you want to learn more about Trey and Katie, we'll link their information down below. Congratulations on the baby, my gosh. Um, Thanks. Thank you. I'm putting out the special. She's gonna put out a son. <laughs> do we know the? So ju- we have a lot cooking. We know the gender. Oh yeah, we, we know, did. Yeah. We did. Okay. Yeah, having a little boy. <laughs> that wasn't yeah. exclusive. Oh my gosh. Like, so, yeah, we're having a little boy. Congratulations! So. Wow. Thank Thanks. You. And Wait, y'all have y'all have a boy and a girl. We have a boy and a girl. Boys wild. Bro, boys are wild. Wild. <laughs> you ready? Um, I have a couple of buddies with like two girls and a buddy with two boys, and yeah, I feel like my friend. He's like. I spent three hours lifting him up to dunk yesterday. <laughs> yes. Literally, we do that. <laughs> yes. I will I say, though. my soul, dude. That's what I do with my little dude. This is my little <laughs> preachy advice, and I apologize. <laughs> but I feel like in the phase that you guys are in, where you're, like, halfway through it, and, like, young married couple, there's so many people that like to feed you this thought of, oh, like, your social life is over. You can't travel. Things are going to change. It's a different phase. And it is. So, Enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> I'm kidding. Stop I am trying kidding. to be funny. Bro. I'm a comedian. What do you want from me? I just. I'm just like, <laughs> um, this is right now. And <laughs> if you look at it that way, yes, it could happen. But it is honestly, it's the greatest thing to ever happen. And yes. things only change because you want them to. Like you can continue doing whatever you want. Um, 
but it, it's truly the coolest phase of life. It's so much fun. You're just, you're getting Katie fired up right now. She'll send me Preach stuff. It. Preach She'll it. send me like an, <laughs> some blogger post of like, they have their toddler in a high chair and Positano. She's like, see, let's, I said, let's can't take wait to sure. next year. <laughs> like, oh, right, we've been to, do. we've been to Turks. We've been all over the country. We've been, yeah, we've yeah. done it all with Here, like music infants. Music to her and... ears. All right. Thanks a lot. Now we have to go to Italy. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, honestly, awesome, thank you both thank you. for uh, for the great content. Um, big fan, personally. And uh, we'll have to follow up when the baby's born a couple months after to see what exactly changed. But You guys need Yeah, to. we'll have to have you on the pod here. We'll talk to you. And we'll, I'm sure we'll be in Nashville at some point. I guess we're going all over with the baby. So we'll see you yes. with the baby we'll in see Nashville. You with the baby. Yes. We'll babysit Let's for go. you while you guys can go gallivant on Nashville. Awesome. Oh, wow. I, wow. That is very kind. <laughs> Sounds good. Appreciate y'all. Thanks for the time. Yeah, so great to meet you and talk to you. Talk yeah. to y'all soon.